A-R-E podcast episode number 47. Welcome to the Welcome to the A-R-E podcast. A-R-E podcast. Where it's all about encouraging and inspiring you today so you can fulfill your dream of becoming a licensed architect tomorrow. And now your host, David Doucette. Hello and welcome to another episode of the ARE Podcast. Today we have another micro podcast for you. We're going to be talking about how you are doing the breaks all wrong. Eric, uh, take it away. So, you know, this one comes up all the time and it's, it's especially frustrating because I feel like this is something that NCARB's actually been really great about is they've been warning you Hey, we changed how the brakes are done. Hey, heads up here. We changed how the brakes are done. Hey, here's 50 videos explaining how we've changed how the brakes are done. And yet it seems like I still get, it doesn't happen every week, but every other week, uh, somebody who said, yeah, I totally got screwed on the brakes because I wasn't paying attention. And, uh, I got locked out of a bunch of questions that I never, never got to answer. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's maddening. And it is something that, um, I predicted months ago, and not to toot my own horn, but this is something I picked up early on, and I don't know why. It just it's something that uh, I connected with when they announced the online testing, and then the online testing came. Everybody was talking about the whiteboard. It was all about the whiteboard, and and not being able to have scratch paper. Like that that was the main news cycle uh, for months. And then um, in all of that, I saw the part about the breaks. And I was like, well, this is really new information. Um, and if people don't understand the breaks, they're going to get locked out of questions. And we're going to talk about what that means in a second. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Because so much focus was on the whiteboard that candidates weren't even hearing about the breaks. And we did sadly get emails, uh, a string of them for a little while, of how they got locked out of questions because they took a break and they couldn't get back into them. And um, but but at now at this point, uh, there's been enough hopefully information out there about the breaks that uh, that's happening less. But as as you mentioned, Eric, we still occasionally hear about it. So that's that's why we're doing this one right now. So what is it? Uh, about the breaks, why do we need to know them, and how do we do it so we don't get locked out of questions we've already seen? So here's the way it works. Um, every every division has a different amount of break time because why not? Let's just make it really confusing, I guess. So they all have different amounts of break time, and you can choose when you take your break. You can also um, essentially uh use this time any way you see fit so you can take multiple short breaks or one long break or not take a break at all and i think in in all of that flexibility they've ended up making it a little more confusing and the trouble is normally a break wouldn't cause this much distress (laughs) but now when you take a break any question that you've looked at even if you didn't answer it but just you read the question will become locked so what and, if I just peek uh, at, I just want to peek at the case studies because I'm, I'm really anxious about the case studies. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm kind of feeling things out. I'm poking around before I jump into it. So I'll just, I just want to peek at the case studies, but I'll just do them later. Yeah, well, that, that, that was the uh, kind of old trick for a lot of people. They would read through the case studies and then go take their break, thereby giving them half an hour to think about it, I think was their thinking, which you don't need. But if you do that, then you will get that little red incomplete next to the question and you will not be able to click on it. Uh, in fact, any of those kind of green or red questions after your break, you won't be able to go back and do anything. Can't change the answer, can't read it again. And if you just happen to read it but didn't bother answering, sorry. Uh, the only ones that you'll be able to touch are the ones that are unseen, that are marked as unseen. And the worst part of this is that NCARB tells you this right in the test. There's a big giant warning box that says, hey, do this, but nobody reads it, and they just click, okay, and because they, they, they just want to go pee or do whatever it is they're, they're doing on their break. So the short of it is, if I look at a question before I take my break, and I don't answer it, 
uh, mark it. I want to come back for later. So I'll just, I'll do it after my break. Um, the problem is I can't do that. Anything that I have clicked on, just even quickly peeked at, even just viewed for a second, the fact that I clicked on it means it's a, an active question, so to speak. And when I take my break, it will be locked. I can't get back to it. Whether I answered it, marked it, left it blank, I cannot get back to it. That is that correct? That is absolutely correct. And so what this has done is, is it, it, it's caused a lot of people to say, well, fine, I won't take a break, which is, I, is a way to go. I, you know, I get, I get it. Uh, but remember that these tests are four or five hours each. That's a long time to go. You know, David can't go 20 minutes without having to go to the bathroom. So I can't imagine him going five hours without a break. So it's, it's a long time to just have your brain on and, and, and running. You know, taking a break is a good thing and it's a good way to recharge and get blood flowing again. So I don't know if skipping the break altogether is really the option. And in terms of break, how many breaks do we typically get? Is it up to us or do we get a set time of 30 minutes total and we get to use that however we see fit? How exactly does that work? Yeah, so each test is a little different between 30 to 45 minutes and you can use them however you see fit. So if you wanted to take 10 three-minute breaks, you could. Uh, I wouldn't advise it because you, you lose time and momentum, right? That, that's where it could kind of work against you. But taking, you know, two breaks seems reasonable, especially on a four or five hour test. That seems like a good thing. If only just to stretch and use the bathroom. So it seems like a lot of people get through the multiple choice and, and, and might take one break during the multiple choice and then maybe take another break um, before beginning the case studies. That seems to be kind of a, a strategy that I know a lot of our coaching candidates are using. Yeah, that seems to be the default everybody does. They'll, they'll go through all the regular item things first. They won't peek at the case studies, remember, because then you'll get locked out. And then they take their break. And then we really advise people to do two things. One, use your break to relax. Don't fret about the questions. Don't think about the, the, the things that you already answered. Use it to clear your head, to breathe, to lower your blood pressure, really to get clear headed and, um, you know, almost meditate in a certain sense. And two, come back a couple minutes early because the, the, you know, the, the, the counter will count down and sometimes the proctor will get busy and won't be able to see you right away. So if you really cut it to the last minute, the test could start without you and you're just, you know, lose a little bit, bit of time that really is unnecessary. And speaking of the proctor, and this is something I want you guys to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to everything Eric and I say, but uh, this one I definitely want to highlight. Like my old social studies teacher in eighth grade, when she was going to give us a note, she'd be like, okay, right. And she would wait for us to get ready. This is one of those. For at-home testing, when you, you can request your break and you cannot take your break until the proctor comes on, acknowledges your request, and approves your request. It might take a couple of minutes. It might take a couple of minutes for them to see you. I know this because somebody in our group uh, had commented that they heard from a friend or it happened to their friend that they requested to take their break and they just got up and left the exam. The uh, proctor didn't get a chance yet to authorize the break, so the proctor ended their exam, and they came back, and their exam was done. Uh, so don't let that happen to you. So if you're taking it at home, make sure you're receiving that uh, communication from the proctor before you get up to leave your desk. And again, it might take a couple of minutes to get the break, so um, you just think about that and, pl and uh, plan ahead. But by all means, pay attention to that computer screen and make sure the proctor has granted you permission to take the break. Because if they come back and they see you're not there, they will end the exam. They will. They'll be very strict about it, actually. And, and if you're complaining about the, the bureaucracy of all these, uh, you know, all these rules around the break, just remember that the bureaucracy is part of the test, right? Seeing if you can follow complex instructions is technically another part of the, of, of the test. I'm glad you mentioned that. And I know we've kind of been on this kick uh, lately about telling candidates about uh, this whole process is not just about picking the right answer. The right answer is just a small part of this entire process, whether it's AXP, 
whether it's navigating the whiteboard, whether it's navigating NCARB, all of this is designed um, to just get us through the process. And uh, if we're going to sit here and, you know, wax poetic about whether the how NCARB handles the break is fair or not fair, it does us no good. And the fact is, it's the way it is. And what we need to do as soon to be licensed professionals is learn to uh, play by the rules. Okay, learn the NCARB rule. I might not like it, but that's that's neither here nor there. I just need to play by their rule. Um, and that's what we do. And that's what we learn to do. And I don't think it's too much to ask. I don't think these break rules are unfair. Obviously, NCARB thought about all of this when they went to uh, at-home testing. We just have to learn to the, learn the rules. Exactly. Alrighty, I think um, I think that's going to wrap it up for uh, how to use the break, or I think what, what you call this, or you're using the break all wrong. Uh, yeah. So, so, but yeah, please, please um, listen to this and listen to our words because it it hurts um, when I get the emails about oh I just I peeked at the case study or I didn't even mean to I didn't even know I looked at the case study and I came back and it was locked you know so just be careful um, and uh, and with that said uh, for Eric uh, my name is David and we'll see you guys on the next ARE podcast thanks, thanks for listening to the ARE podcast. Be sure to visit architectexamprep.com and check out our other podcast episodes, video tips, and the ARE blog. Remember to plan, practice, and pass.